Old Testament story of Gideon. There's no other biblical account that's as power as full as Gideon's account as God gave him a new identity. And as we look at that, I want you to understand that there are three steps to victory today. Three stages, I guess you could say, towards victory today. All right? In Judges chapter 6, you'll find that first of all, that Gideon found victory on the inside, right? He had to change his internal feeling about who he was. His internal belief about who he was. That was the first step. That was the first stage. And then, secondly, he had to deal with his own personal life. He had to deal with the stuff that was in his household. He had to deal with the stuff that, 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 that his family had been involved in. And thirdly, finally, after those two, he was able to have victory in the mission. And how many of you know that God, through the hand of Gideon and just 300 others, defeated the Midianites? Come on. Victory can be ours. And as we look at these steps, what we discover is that we have the same steps. We have to go through the same process, right? Amen. And when we first find Gideon, we discover that Israel is in a mess. They have been worshiping false gods. They have been bowing down to the Baals. And because of that, God allowed the Midianites to come up. And what they would do is they would come up by the hundreds and thousands just at harvest time. And as soon as they got all the grain ready, they would take all that grain. Now, we're not from an agrarian culture uh, most of y'all ain't farmers today, but uh, can you imagine that if for several years, every time you got your paycheck, before you got to the bank, somebody held you up and the Midianites took your check, you'd be pretty upset. And that's the feeling that Gideon had, right? We find him, he's hiding, all right? He doesn't look much like a victor. He's got some little grain in there and he's trying to thresh it out in this small little wine press and he's hiding in there thinking, if I can just get enough grain just and I can hide it somewhere, maybe I'll make it through. And he has questions, big questions. He feels like God has abandoned them. He feels like he's not a leader. He doesn't even want to be a leader. All he wants to do is get enough grain so he can make it through to the next season, right? So let's pick up the story here in Judges 6. It says this, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abriz, Abriz, whatever it is. He's, he's, amen. While his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now I want you to understand that the first step we have to take, the first stage we have to take in becoming a victor is we've got to have victory on the inside and we get that by accepting what God has said about us. Amen? You've got to accept what God has said about you. Victory, first of all, comes on the inside where you start believing God. Gideon had to accept that he was a mighty man of valor. Amen? And that's the exact same thing that you and I have to do. Amen? I love Judges 612 where he says the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor now figure this out this dude is hiding and he's afraid and the angel of the Lord calls him a mighty man of valor and Gideon is like really the, the Lord is with me does this look like victory to you I mean there's one thing I like about Gideon you knew what he was thinking right Read the chapter yourself in Judges chapter 6. He goes on to say, if God is with us, as you say, then where are the miracles? You know, if, if it's the same Lord that brought us up out of Egypt, you know, why are we in this condition that we're in today? Why is all of this happening to us? He tried to get into kind of a theological discussion with the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord didn't listen to any of that. He just said, go and save them in your mighty strength. Gideon looks around. He's like, what? Who are you talking to? 
I, there's only, I'm the only one in this little wine press. Are you talking to me? Do you not know who I am? Let me tell you who I am. And he begins to identify his identity, all right? He says this. He says, my tribe is the least in Israel, and my father's house is the least in that tribe. And guess what? I'm the lowest one on the totem pole in my own household. In other words, he was saying, I am not anything. Don't you realize who you are talking to? But you see, God wanted him to accept his new identity. And God wants for us to accept our new identity as well. And the truth is that many times our old identity clings to us a lot longer than it should. Hello? You say, well, pastor, you don't know the neighborhood I grew up in. <laughs> I'm from that neighborhood over there. Things weren't very good over there. I didn't grow up in suburbia. Hello. We start defining ourselves by our family that we had. We start defining ourselves by the past things that have happened to us. We start defining ourselves in a, neg in a negative type of a way. It might be the voice of your dad or your mom who, who, who unfortunately they said negative things about you. And it might be your old life begins to shout from the past and says, look, this is who you really are you can never live in victory you'll always be this you'll never change there's no need to try to adopt something new but listen I've got good news today come on is there anybody ready for some good news in the house today I've got some good news today because the word of God says this therefore if anyone is in Christ I wonder today is there anybody in this house that's in the Lord Jesus Christ come on you've accepted him amen you've been baptized baptized into the body of Christ. Hello. You are part of his body. It says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things are become, have become new. Listen today, you don't have to let your past define you. You don't have to let what's gone on in your life define you. Let the Lord Jesus Christ give you his identity. You say, well, who am I, Pastor Bob? Let me tell you who you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Woo! Amen. You are his own special possession. You have been chosen by God, handpicked by the God who created the universe. You are his treasure. You are loved beyond compare. You are worth dying for. You are forgiven. You are his child. Come on, somebody. It's time we believe the Lord. It's time we understand who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people have heard this teaching about having a new identity. And how many of you know, it's not if you've heard a teaching or not that it impacts you. You could hear it 12 times, 15 times, and it never impacts you. It's when you start believing it and you start acting on it, that's when you know that you understand it. Come on. So Gideon says this to the angel. He says, look, just show me a sign. Do something supernatural, and I'll believe, right? Right? And I don't know how come they did this, but I guess back in that day when somebody came to visit, you killed a goat. I mean, we see Abraham doing it and others. They killed a goat and fixed some food and made some unleavened bread. And he got that all prepared for him and brought him out to the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord says, look, just put it over there on that rock. Pour some broth on it. And the angel of the Lord walks over with his staff and, and touches it. And it's just like fire just comes out. And it just consumes all of that. And all of a sudden, man, I'll Gideon's thinking, I, maybe I, that's who I really am. Maybe that's who I really am. And the struggle was real for him. And as you go on in Gideon's life, you'll discover that he's really struggled accepting his new identity. And a lot of people struggle accepting who they are in Christ. In fact, just a short time later, before he went up before the Midianites, he took a piece of uh, fur, we called it a fleece, and he took it outside and he told the Lord, look, I'm going to leave this outside while I'm sleeping tonight. And he put it on the ground and he said, if you're God and you're going to help me, I want the fleece to be dry and, and the ground to be wet. He came out the next morning and there it was. And then the next night he said, look, I'm going to leave the fleece out again. And, and if, the, if, the, if the ground is wet, dry, or the fleece is wet, then I'll know that you're the Lord. And, and, and sure enough, all of that happened. And so you might be thinking as you read this, well, pastor, maybe I need to do that. Maybe I should get a piece of uh, my 
get my rug out of my kitchen. You probably don't have a fleece in your house. Take it outside and, and see if that'll work for me. Listen, you've got a better covenant than Gideon had. Come on, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to say, I need a something supernatural to accept who I am. You've already got something supernatural. Come on, you've got the Word of Almighty God. Come on, is there anybody who believes that this book is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12 says this, For the Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. You know what we used to have a saying like this in church? God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Hello? We need to get back that to that today. If God has said that you can be a victor, then that's the truth. Amen? We, and beyond that, not only does He give us the witness of the Word, but He gives us another witness, and that is the witness of the very Spirit of the living God. You say, well, I'd like to be sure. I'd like to know that I really am a child of God, that I really can have victory, that God does hear my prayers. Listen, Romans 8, 16 says this, that the Spirit Himself, oh, come on, somebody. I said the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I don't know how He communicates with you. I don't know how you hear His still, small voice. I don't know what that sounds like in your heart or in your life, but I know how I feel it. I know how He speaks to me hello and on occasion amen all of a sudden I get that kind of a warm feeling that on the inside and I say Lord is that you and let me tell you something all of a sudden it begins to grow and I know that the spirit of the living God is saying you know what Bob you are a victor you will win come on somebody it's time we start believing the Lord <laughs> Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I just believe that God wants to give everybody in this house an identity as a victor. And you know what we also need? We also need the identity as a, of a victor as a church. Corporate victory. I might just preach on that in the near future. Amen. Amen. So the next step, if you want to accept your identity, first of all, it's got to be victory on the inside, accepting what the Lord says about you. And then if you want the second step, the second stage, you've got to have victory in your person. Yeah. 